Hey, Steve Mignani here at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts. Not doing the junkyard crawl today, we're doing the hubcap game, which is we do about every seventh day. This is the 22nd installment of the hubcap game. So let's get it started right now with a hubcap, a wheel cover from a Ford, probably an LTD, about 1969, I would dare say, full-size Ford, often in burgundy with four doors, kind of typical 392 barrel kind of car. Chevrolet right here, 1963 Chevy Impala, uh, perhaps uh, a Bel Air, not a Biscayne. It's a full wheel cover, but again, it's a one-piece stamping with a cool cone effect. Nice use of uh, textured silver paint on there, the Lucite Center, which almost looks like a Corvair Turbo logo, to be honest with you, the way it's sort of inset without the, the turbo thing. But again, full-size Chevrolet, 1963. <laughs> Speaking of great Chevrolets, here it is, man, 1957 Bel Air. Now this one is telling. This has these four holes, which would have had an additional item that would have made it into a deluxe wheel cover. The same basic stamping could be used with or without that. And this one here has been denuded of its extra element. But again, 57 Chevy, one piece stamping, stainless steel. But again, the great 57 Chevy, in fact, first year for 14 inch rims on the full size Chevy, went from 15s in 56 to 14s in 57s for a lower profile, right here. All right, this one speaks for itself. Pontiac, right here, probably about 1955, I want to say, uh, which would have been first year for Pontiac's V8. Uh, I think a 260, 260, 287 cubic inches, I think it was overhead valve, V8, like a Chevy small block, kinda. But again, 1955, I'm almost sure, Pontiac full-size, Chieftain, something like that, 15-incher. Oldsmobile, the rocket division right there. This would have been like a 1968 uh, Olds Cutlass family mobile, something like that, four door, pretty much typical, or a station wagon, whichever. But again, that's cool, like a steel band from Jamaica. Like it. Oh boy, Granada, Ford Granada, 1975, six, seven, something like that. The Granada gave way to the Fairmont, but again, the Granada was kind of Maverick based, uh, available as a two door or a four door, never convertible, never a wagon. But again, the Granada was Ford sort of a senior con compact car um, for the uh, late seventies, mid seventies right there. Oh, I love this, reminds me of my grandmother. This is a 65 Chevy Impala SS hubcap with the fake spinner. My grandmother, Phyllis Ober, had a 283 Power Glide powered 65 Impala SS with uh, these wheel covers on it. I remember these very, very clearly. And again, gotta love that false spinner, die cast metal, and uh, even has uh, a one piece construction hoop. And again, the interesting thing here is that the clip for the wheel engagement is actually made of ferrous metal, iron based stuff, which is uh, riveted to the stainless steel hat. And then we have, of course, the spinner modded. And it's beautiful. This one's still got the red SS right there. This is clearly from a Super Sport. Now, here's the thing. In 65, the SS could be had with a six-cylinder engine um, or a 327 or 283. Uh, the 396 arrived midway through the year. 1965 was also the other 409 was possible in a full-size Impala. What this one had on it, we can only guess. Ah, okay. This is a little bit confusing. It looks at first like it might have been a Buick. This is probably 1957 or 8 Mercury. I've seen these before, like on a Mercury uh, Turnpike Cruiser. There'd be a little Lucite emblem in here, but again, this weird sort of meat hammer kind of effect right here. You gotta wonder if you hit a squirrel or something like that, could you pulverize it and, and tenderize it uh, in one shot? I don't know. But here we have uh, 14 inches. It's stainless, but again, the nastiness of the the two-piece construction where the, the ring was pressed and crimped into the outer perimeter. And this is going away, but the rest is not. Got to wonder about stainless and why we're not made out of that. Okay, here's another hybrid hubcap from the 19, late 70s, early 80s. Another Buick, probably a full-size Century or something like that. Uh, perhaps even the mid-size. But anyway, here we have the stainless center with the, the iron or the ferrous base, I should say, galvanized metal, which is rotting away. Again, crimped, just like it was on that other hubcap. And again, the Buick crest here, this sort of regal trapezoidal thingamajig, which is uh, just sort of squeezed or swedged, I guess. It's metal, but it's swedged on there. It's still staying there. It's better than glue. Ah, uh, Pontiac Sunbird. We've seen these 
Uh, this would be like 1976, seven, something like that. And again, these look a lot like the honeycomb wheels seen on Trans Ams and senior Pontiacs. But again, these are made out of plastic with a metal inner, which is crimped in place. Without the uh, stainless steel center, this looks very strange. But again, the interesting part is that this ring the center and the little spokes are all a one piece item, which is again added to the plastic behind it. And these little metal tabs are inserted into one way clips. And again, this is a factory Pontiac wheel cover from a Sunbird, 13 inch diameter, small. Okay, a little sportier right here, 1964 Plymouth Sport Fury right here. The Plymouth Mayflower coming at you. In fact, if you look at that straight on, that's basically the Plymouth Mayflower. The Pilgrims coming here to the New World and their sailing ship coming right at you. Getting ready to land at Plymouth Mass. Spinner here, 1964, definitely Sport Fury. Uh, and kind of cool, look at this. The little, the little template or the tempo right there, that ink thing. To, uh, Plymouth Dodge DeSoto Chrysler right there, the part number of the hubcap. So this wheel cover is very well preserved. Uh, interesting, this thing has seen, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of miles, but that little stamping from the inspector has been there from day one. Look at this, actually. This is kind of interesting right here. It says 093, it says wheel cover. See that, that little sort of remnants of a, a marking of some kind, inventory control. Pretty cool. You gotta remember that hubcaps aren't necessarily made by the car makers. They come from vendors like Garwood Industries or any number of other sources. So they have little logos that tell you secrets, little tiny stories that are right behind the surface. Uh, Full-sized Chevrolet uh, Malibu, I should say mid-sized Malibu, or Nova, 1974-5, the Laguna era, uh, the Colonnade style cars, 14 inches, but again, the same wheel cover could be found on a, a Nova, a deluxe Nova, or a deluxe Chevy, like Chevelle, the Malibu, if you will. So uh, compact and mid-sized cars could wear the same hubcap. That's corporate branding right there, good work. Not full-size Chevy, this is a 14, so it's be too small for a full-size Chevy with a 15-inch wheel. Yeah, getting back to full-size Chevys, and again, in the 60s, this would be probably a 1968 Chevrolet a Capri, yeah, probably more like an Impala or a Bel Air, not a Biscayne. Once again, this would be a sort of a mid or upper uh, quality vehicle. I love how the plastic center is clipped in here with this little triangular wire, and it's still, still there. But again, I've mentioned this before, but as a snot-nosed little brat, uh, I would find a car like this, when this thing's gone, you'd put a couple of rocks in there, or lug nuts, whatever it is, and when the guy drive off, you'd hear this rattling sound. I wonder, what the heck's wrong with my car? Because up to speed, they just fly around Central Forest, but when you came to a stop, you hear this clanking noise. I admit, I'm sorry I did it. Okay, the standard of the world, Cadillac right here. We have the Cadillac motor car division, and look at that motor car division, look at that not an engine car. And uh, this is Cadillac, probably 1956, I'm gonna say, 15 inch diameter. And that's a cool little piece right there. That's a pretty substantial, it's not bronze, but it's, it's a thicker piece of metal than you would think. It's crimped in there. But again, a one piece hat, 15 inch Cadillac, 1956, I'm gonna guess. Getting back to Buick, here we have it here. But this is a little special. This one here is off a of Wildcat. I just remember the Wildcat arrived in 62 as a two-door hardtop only, but grew into four doors in 1963 and, and larger vehicles. But again, this similar hubcap could be found on lesser Buicks, but with a tri-shield here, whereas for the uh, Wildcat application, they use this, this little image of a Wildcat. And we did a video on one of these. Uh, it was a four-door hardtop Wildcat, a 66, that I think ran last week. So these are wheel covers we found on that. And behind this up front, you would also see the 12-inch aluminum brake drum that was a, a Buick-specific thing on full-size Wildcats and Electra 225s in the mid-60s. And Rivieras. More Buick. Try shield right here. This would be like from a 73 uh, Buick Century, one of the uh, Colonnade cars. I remember Telly Savalas uh, had a TV show, but he was a TV cop, Kojak. He had a brown uh, Buick Century with these wheel covers on it. And here it is, a one-piece stamping. Kind of like the Buick wheel, it has kind of a dished look. If you ever notice a full-size Buick wheel from the 50s or 60s, odd-looking wheel, very dished, without a, a prominent hubcap nub on it. But again, same effect going on with these. But this is a 14 seen on the midside body on frame Buick um, Century of 1973-4. Ah, ah, this is a sweetheart right here. This is going to be an Oldsmobile wheel cover. And this one has the optional Forest DK, the flora and the fauna of the Bernstein uh, wildlife. And it's not three o'clock, it's not five o'clock, it's spore o'clock. 
But again, this is a fake wire wheel cover, and this is a multi-piece construction. I've marveled here before on the junkyard or the, the hubcap game. The amount of effort and parts that went into this is not that far away from a real wire wheel, not really. But you gotta say, look at this, all these pieces and parts and just the way that the, the spokes are pierced into this thing. Probably wasn't a pretty, it must have been a brutal effect when they put this together. But it's pretty convincing uh, without the, all the junk on it. But these will be seen on full-size Oldsmobiles like Delta 98s, that kind of stuff from 1978, 79, that period of time. And let's do one more and... Okay, yeah, more Buick Wildcat right here. And this is gonna be about 1968, I wanna guess, full-size Buick, the same wheel cover found on a LeSabre, but the Wildcat would get this specific Lucite center with the, sort of the knob effect and the Wildcat to remind people how crazy and wild you were as you drove your full-size Buick Wildcat. But again, one piece stainless steel with the Lucite center. But again, Buick made the same stamping do two jobs, just replace what's in the middle and you got a different hubcap. Uh, I wasn't fooled, but some people were, but it's cool either way. Well, that is the 22nd installment of the hubcap game. And if you want to see the first 21, just go to the channel playlist and they're there for free. You can binge away if you want. Uh, if you don't like the hubcap game, well, too bad for you. I'm kidding. We'll be back tomorrow with the Junkyard Crawl, which is where we actually spend time looking at vehicles here at Burston Auto Wrecking. We'll see you tomorrow.